So there is a misconception that PA Consortium is 100% online. Um, can you explain how first year PA school works at U of T? Yes, most of it is online, but there are residential blocks where everyone from um, the program, wherever they are geographically, they all come to Toronto, and uh, we have in-class um, we have in-class uh, sessions. So most of it is clinical skills focused because you want to learn your physical exam skills and um, other hands-on skills. But um, there are other uh, courses or like intro to courses. So in September we got an intro to. Uh, intro to PA role course and then um, in December res block we had a wrap up for certain courses and then kind of introducing you to second semester courses before uh, Christmas break so residential block is there's a lot of variety sometimes um, you meet with the program directors and they ask for feedback and then they kind of update you about how things are going to go or even like uh, setting you up with clinical rotation so kind of starting that earlier on those all take place during res block and then once you move on to online learning which is um, most of the time. So, sorry, going back to res block in September was four weeks. December was like about a week and a half. April, we have one coming up about two weeks. And then July, second half of July and first half of August is our last res block. Um, so, moving on to online learning, that kind of fills in the gap between those res blocks. And uh, it's a lot of um, self learning. So, you are given a set number of lectures and you do that on your own time. And the good thing about online learning is you get to schedule your own day. So, um, if one day you're doing an LCE, so Tuesdays um, every week is allocated for LCEs, then you have the other days to kind of work around that. Um, and uh, yeah, most of them are recorded lectures, and then you also have weekly meetings for each course to make sure you're staying on top of things. And this could be through class discussion, or this could be through quizzes um, to make sure you're up to date. Um, so it helps you keep, uh, keep on top of things. But uh, online learning is probably the time when most of the people fall behind, but you do have the in-class portions where you are able to mingle with class. And how do tests work? Do you go in person, or are they done online? Yeah, so tests, um, so quizzes are kind of online at home, but tests, you actually go to a proctor site. So for the people close to Toronto or who can commute to Toronto, we um, have someone as part of the program or like the professor or the TA who kind of uh, proctors the exam. Um, so you go to... Uh, a building on campus, UFT campus, and take the test. Um, for people who are further away, they actually set up their own proctor site, which is approved through the UFT program um, coordinator, and then uh, they take it there. So sometimes it's five minutes away from their home, sometimes they have to like drive a bit, or sometimes they just like to come to Toronto. Um, so there's a lot of uh, flexibility, and they usually, the program tries to make it work for you. But for those that are, for your classmates who are outside of the GTA, <laughs> Um, what arrangements do they have to make to be present for those residential blocks, especially if they're four weeks instead of one and a half weeks? For sure, yeah. So Airbnb is a common... Um common uh, option for uh, the students who are coming from afar and I think uh, from September res block to December res block people started pairing um, with other classmates to get a place together so usually Airbnb seems to be the common thing that people get closer to campus um, so that they can commute and take the subway so um, and it's they try to get it done as early as possible so that they can save some money but most of the time people are doing the online portion at home so that kind of helps with that too. Mm -hmm. And um, for the residential blocks, is it class time like 8 to 4 every day, Monday to Friday? How does it work? So every day is different. Um, sometimes we have super long days where we start at 8 and uh, we finish at 5. Or sometimes we have shorter days where we start around like 9, 30, 10 and we finish at 3, 30. Um, it all depends on the schedule and every day... Um, most of the days you have clinical skills, but um, some days you have like a lunch with uh, discussing and providing feedback. So those kind of uh, take away, I guess, the busyness of the day. But yeah, every day is different and um, there's no set schedule per se. And they usually try to post it before you come for res block or before the res block starts so that you can kind of prepare for the week ahead. And um, can you walk us through uh, the last, um, I said you, you mentioned a week and a half was the most recent. Mm -hmm. What was every day like? If you just break it down for us? Um, so I think the major um, focus for December Res Block was clinical skills, um, specifically the female male pelvis and then uh, the biopsychosocial uh, module. So we focused a lot on see, like learning about it and then the next day we'd see SPs or standardized patients for that. Um, so that was mostly the focus of December Res Block and we had our um, clinical skills exam which had the EPBL, which is electronic problem-based learning and the clinical skills uh, we learned specifically for December Res Block was what the exam was at the end of that Res Block. Um, other things we did was uh, an intro to farm. So there's this rational prescribing framework um, that 
uh, the prof thought was very good, uh, very important that we address it in person so that we can kind of have a conversation, which is probably a bit easier than online. Um, so that was something we got an intro to. Um, we had, uh, I think we had a curriculum committee meeting, so that the curriculum committee meeting rep went there, so that was kind of uh, at the end of semester one checking in. Um, a lot of feedback sessions, and, um, we had to do it on our, uh, do the physical exam on our partner or our classmate. Um, so you had to kind of speak it out. It's almost like a mock OSCE, um, so that was really helpful, and it was just a pass or fail, so there was no really, um, there were three sections where you kind of did it, or they were probed you to do it, and then you totally forgot to do it, so it was, it was less than a typical, or less like a typical uh, testing um, for OSCE, but it was a good practice. So those are probably the major things that happened during December Res Block. Okay. And you did a class with Ontario K Chapter President Denise O'Leary. What was the title of the class, and what did you enjoy about it? So that, <laughs> Denise taught us intro to PA role, um, and that we started off, so that was another um, course that we got an intro to in September. And uh, I particularly enjoyed that course because it gave you a good foundation to um, just a PA profession in general. So we talked about different topics like funding, regulation, um, different uh, like the economics, like healthcare and how the healthcare system works. We had guest lecturers who came in, which was also very um, interesting. Um, and in terms of uh, assignments, like we had like a lot of readings to do, which was kind of difficult at the time because we were just trying to get used to the PA program. But I think looking back in retrospect, it's it was very beneficial because you start to kind of learn more about the profession, but also it's almost self-learning. So you, you're taught the ways to kind of look up these kind of um, topics on your own. And um, we had quizzes on those readings, and then we also had different interesting assignments, which were super creative. Um, so I think some of those assignments, uh, if I remember, uh, is PA profile. So we had to film a video of ourselves talking about the PA profession and kind of with a personal touch to it. So I did mine. You can do it in any format, so it was super creative. I did mine in an interview format where my classmate asked me questions, and I talked about um, myself and the PA profession almost like uh, making it seem like I'm applying for a job as a PA, so kind of jumping ahead, but it was, um, it was interesting because it was challenging to kind of uh, take a creative approach. That was one assignment. Um, we had a lot of discussion posts, so that was like a key aspect of the course where um, people would ask questions, you would answer questions, and um, one of our final assignments was based on that. You would choose one category, so it was either regulation, funding, or um, there were, I think, two other topics, or you could even come up with your own topic. Denise was really good with that. She was super flexible. Um, and uh, you would just start a discussion, and then you would write an opinion editorial after that about that um, topic that you, were, you chose to do it on. Um, so there were a lot of uh, interesting assignments where, which made you think about the profession and see if it was something uh, that kind of aligned with your interests and needs. So it was definitely a good course. Mm -hmm. What were some of those editorial topics that your classmates came up with? So it was why PAs need to be regulated, um, so opinion editorial on that, or why PAs need more funding, or why healthcare system needs to um, allocate more funds towards PAs, and what PAs contribute to the healthcare system, so different topics like that. And uh, while you write this opinion editorial, you do research about it, and you do learn more about it. So it's not like just a typical lecture-based uh, learning. It was a different way of learning, and um, again, self-taught, so it was, it was interesting. <laughs> And you have a class called LCE. How does that work? Yeah, so LCE is uh, Longitudinal Clinical Experience. So I think it's similar to LPs, which is um, longitudinal, longi placements. longitudinal Placements at MAC. So we are expected to do 30 to 40 hours max um, in any clinical setting. So in certain semesters, um, we have some requirements where it's like 10 hours has to be primary care, which includes family medicine as well as emergency medicine. Um, and then other, you can also do other specialties. So um, the thing about LCE is, is you are expected to kind of reach out and network. So this goes back to the importance of networking. Um, we are given an LCE database to kind of um, reach out to people who've taken students on before, but um, yeah, based on your interest, you do these clinical placements, and again, throughout the week, Tuesdays are allocated for those placements, and uh, your day could range from just four hours or until, when I did general surgery, it was from 7.30 in the morning all the way to 5.30 in the evening, so it can be longer days. Um, 
yeah, so just based on your interests, you choose these placements and you do it every semester. So every semester has a different uh, requirement. And as you progress, so third, second and third semester is more focused on specialties, while first semester you have primary care as well as allied health professionals, which is um, when I was able to do the super cool um, EMS placement, so with the paramedics. Okay, and are you required to do anything? Is it just observing? Are you writing a sick note? Yeah, yeah, so um, it depends. So when you're at the place, um, depending on what the placement is, so with the paramedic stuff, I wasn't able to do anything. There was a lot of observership, but I did have a lot of um, discussions with the paramedics, so like what their thought process was in that emergent situation and why they did certain things. Um, so for those kind of experiences, you're writing a reflection piece. Um, so just kind of reflecting on like what your goals were going in and what you learned throughout, um, what things you found challenging and different uh, things like that. Um, if it was a more clinical setting, so when I did general surgery or when I did family medicine and ER, you do write soap notes. So every semester you have about four, you have to do four soap notes and one reflection, and then first semester, sorry, for this semester it was four soap notes and one reflection. Last semester was three soap notes and two reflections, so you had more flexibility. So in addition to the paramedics, I did the coroner's office, which was also another interesting experience where I could reflect on um, how I felt during the experience. Um, but the soap notes one, you would you would be expected to write, um, you start off with the basic framework and then you start moving on to the assessment and then our differential diagnosis uh, list went from five to 10 for the semester. So kind of broadening your, um, I guess broadening your thoughts and like trying to look at the big picture. So um, yeah, those are the requirements. It's good they have you uh, doing some clinical reasoning in first year. So. For sure, yeah. And it really helps to um, think that way when you do those soap notes at home in the comfort of home and then going into a clinical setting, you're able to think on the spot and provide these differentials to your preceptor. So can you walk us through a typical week of a non-residential block, uh, Monday to Friday, how that looks for you? Yep, um, so online learning, if it's like non-residential, um, varies again every week's different and every semester is different so um, okay so first semester uh, starting off on Monday we didn't really have anything but Tuesdays were allocated to LCEs Wednesdays were um, physiology so we had a physiology meeting um, Thursdays we had clinical skills um, in the morning which is something that we maintain throughout uh, all three semesters in first year and um, Fridays we had our anatomy meeting so depending on when these meetings were you try to cover the lecture material for that meeting because uh, the meetings would be anywhere from like quiz questions to like discussions about concepts or like even case studies so in order to contribute to those or even um, learn from those case studies um, you probably wanted to keep up with the material um, this semester is a bit more different, so it's not very, um, it's, there's a more variety. So um, farm is usually scheduled on Monday. Mondays are the busiest days this semester. So farm is usually scheduled on Monday. Um, we, it could be a variety of going through case studies where students are actually expected to um, work, work up the case um, beforehand and you're assigned into groups and uh, certain groups are expected to run the discussion or facilitate the discussion and kind of um, the professor chimes in and provides her input as you do that. Um, and then there's also, there's sometimes lecture material where um, either the prof or a guest lecturer comes in and talks about dyslipidemia or acute coronary syndrome and different, um, different concepts like that and the medications for those uh, particular conditions. Um, and then following farm, you have pathology, which is, again, why Monday is super busy. Pathology is very, um, it's just one hour, but it's very dense. And uh, pathology is also um, probably one of the courses where we have a lot of lecture material to cover. So um, again, going back to the group study, so I personally, this semester, I split it up. So if we have like 21 lectures and there's, or 24 lectures and there's like six of us, then each of us only has to do um, four lectures. So it brings down the workload and then you review the notes after and prepare for these pathology meetings, where again, it could be case studies, it could be the professor asking you, okay, so what is this? And you kind of have to reword it because it is a lot of material in terms of lecture. So you kind of um, provide your summarized version of that. And then that's followed by a quiz. So again, farm starts with the quiz and then you have lecture and then you have pathology class and then a quiz. So that's this, um, this semester's Mondays. Tuesdays, again, LCE placements. Um, Wednesdays are free this semester. And then Thursdays, again, clinical skills. Um, so compared to last semester, this semester, they changed up clinical skills. So it's more discussion. Instead of presenting um, a specific learning objective, you're actually facilitating a discussion. And then um, Fridays, we have trying to remember, so DTP, so Diagnostic Techniques and Procedures, where again, it's case studies, um, or they, you go through the um, concepts, 
specific for the readings for that week. And then he'll provide you with multiple choice quiz questions um, and then put up a poll on the Blackboard um, app. And then um, after that, you kind of go through cases and like what uh, investigation. So focusing on the investigations aspect of uh, the cases. So that's this uh, semester, is that week through this semester. Um, and weekends are kind of open. So like I usually there's nothing scheduled. So I try to, again, going back to my way of learning, I try to schedule like a lunch with a friend or like a workout midday so that um, I kind of uh, compartmentalize my studying. So in the morning, I do more of like the studying and learning and then in the evening more like the assignments or like casework up for our farm and stuff like that. For sure, so first semester, um, they say November is probably the loneliest month because September is really like everyone's around you, you're always spending time with your classmates and then October you're kind of getting used to the online learning. I guess um, it's kind of like a downtime before November, you're like, oh man, I really miss my classmates. and. Um, as the semester is kind of wrapping up, or at least the online portion is wrapping up, it does get a bit lonely. So I think this semester we try to make more changes. So um, I personally like to um, meet up with people who are closer to me geographically. So like um, just a few days ago, I uh, spent a few days with uh, my friend from Oakville, um, or my, my classmate from Oakville, and it's. It's interesting how like you kind of group together and it's like you need that kind of social support um, and your classmates only know what you're going through so it's perfect. Um, and with in terms of online uh, communication like we always try to um, Facebook message our classmates and make sure like you know you're kind of keeping in touch or even like having an online video chat like it's always there's always something you can do so I think this semester I've started to learn like the importance of kind of keeping in touch with classmates and um, making time for those kind of conversations and taking a break because it's definitely an important aspect of going through such an accelerated program. And um, any tips on how to stay organized and stay on top of uh, your material, study material in school? For sure. Um, so. I personally like to use checklists, um, so I make a checklist of things I need to do for every course and that usually changes on a weekly basis. And then I have a calendar where I schedule, I make my weekly schedule on the Sunday. Um, so I take the checklist and I kind of allocate it to different days of the week. Um, and I think just like checking off that thing off the checklist kind of helps me or motivates me to keep going. Um, in terms of every day, um, I have a friend in my class who suggested doing a workday approach to um, studying. So you would study from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and then you take the evenings off. Um, again, I had to change that a bit because I can't study for like nine hours straight. So I, um, I work from, I study from 7.30 to 12 and then I take a break where it'll be about like three hours where I, um, I go to the gym or I like eat lunch and watch a show so I take like a mental break and then I continue again um, in the late evening and then I finish up like about 8.39. Um, so I guess it depends on uh, what works for everyone but um, I think checklists and uh, kind of allocating different things throughout the day of the week helps. Um, how do you sit down and talk a little medical condition case or learning medications for example? Um, I think it it varies based on the course and it varies based on the concept. So medications I found to be very hard um, to get at least at the beginning of the semester because some of those words I couldn't even pronounce. So um, I think uh, trying to come up with different like mnemonics or different abbreviations and like um, whatever works for you really. So medication was probably one of the challenging things uh, to learn for me at least this semester. Um, with pathology or concepts like that where it's like a process or a disease process, you want to kind of step back and look at the big pictures but or big picture but also focus on the fine details because um, sometimes that's where uh, the medication affects the receptor or stuff like that. So um, I like to, I like one, I think one of our profs say start off with broad brush strokes and then start focusing on the fine detail and you wouldn't feel as overwhelmed because if you're looking at the small things, then it's like, okay, I need to step back and kind of look at the big picture. It, wor it works either way, but personally I think I start off like broad and then I kind of focus in on the details. Um, yeah, so like disease process, medications, um, in terms of IPR, like intro to PA role courses, I think with the research aspects or even clinical skills has a lot of research aspects. I try to, um, sometimes they're provided with a case study and you have to think of differentials. I try to think of differentials based on disease process. So like if it's a lung problem, then it could be like fluid buildup or it could be like a foreign body or it could be like a pneumothorax, different things like that. Um, and then I try to look up, I, Toronto Notes is a really good resource for that. Um, and then also the online databases. So like PubMed and um, 
BMJ and different aspects like that. So I think uh, we got like a tutorial for that in September Res Block on how to use the online resources. So depending on which course, just using different resources and whatever study technique works for you. Mm -hmm. I'm a first year PA student at the University of Toronto.